Hello and welcome to our webinar today, introducing features of NavCAD Premium. This will be a brief introductory webinar, uh, so we encourage you to reach out to us directly for more detailed information. Please use the chat feature to ask any questions during the webinar. What is the NAVCAD Premium Edition? NAVCAD, as you know, is Hydrocomp's flagship product. Uh, we have other tools for resistance and propeller analysis, including Swiftcraft and Prop Expert. We have a propeller detail design tool in Prop Elements and our geometric model or the very popular PropCAD tool. But NAVCAD is our principal flagship product for what Hydrocomp is, is most popularly known. The existing feature set that's in NAVCAD right now up to the 2015 product version is what we're calling the standard edition. There's absolutely no reduction in the current feature set of the standard edition of NAVCAD from what you're used to. The premium edition is a superset of, of features and capabilities intended to serve what we would refer to as the power user. And I'm, I'm going to introduce four of the principal uh, premium edition features today. Uh, scripting, operating modes analysis, our new wave theory resistance prediction module, and the floating network license that is part of an upgrade or a purchase of the NEVCAD premium edition. We'll begin with scripting. Uh, scripting, as most of you know, is a programming language or it's a purposed programming instruction set to provide an alternative to the, the graphical user interface, the GUI of the program. Many of us prefer to use keyboards and mice, but other people prefer scripting as a way to do process of the data entry and calculations. Now, scripting is also very useful if you're repeating calculations many, many times. We are using scripting here, for example, in a new study of the Series 64 data. So we're taking the 27 different models and running different kinds of analyses very easily through a, a scripting session. What, excuse me, what I'd like to do is to, be, is to begin an introduction to scripting just by showing you one. I'm going to pop up NavCAD. I've already populated this with a, uh, our sample tutorial pulse set. And under utilities, you'll find the scripting link with the premium nomenclature that. So this is a feature that's only available in the premium edition, and you'll see in your license, it will say premium at the top of the, of the program if you have that license and are running NAVCAD in premium edition. Scripting will pop up a, a text editor, and the very first I'm going to introduce you to is very simple. Now, the script is a text-based instruction that's very object-oriented. You will have objects and attributes of those objects. Objects could include hulls or appendages, environment, propellers or propulsion, different kinds of things. In this case, we have an attribute of the project group called Project ID. Now, if we look in the background here, we'll see the Project ID text field or data entry field, it says sample tutorial. That was the text which was entered in the tutorial example in the NAVCAD help and user's guide. What we're going to do is we're going to change that to my first script. So it's very simple, project.projectid .project and space in quotes, my first script. Can a lint check, we call it, to make sure that the syntax is Okay, we'll check that. No script error is found. And when we run this, the script is completed, and you'll see the data in the background has changed. Now, this, of course, is a very simple script. So let's uh, look at something 
a little more complicated, not very much, but a let's sort of reiterate the idea of this being object oriented, that we'll have a project object and description being attribute of that. So we're going to change the description line to new data available. You can see comment lines as well that you can introduce into a script. We're going to add data for the transom stern. In the tutorial, we left out the beam at the waterline at the transom and the immersion draft at the transom. So we can enter these two figures via scripting. Hall dot beam waterline at transom, 9.14 meters, hall dot immersion draft at 2.05 meters. Now, before I continue, all of the syntax that you will find, meaning hall dot beam waterline at transom, for example, is identified in a user's guide API uh, help file and the PDF. So let's run this one in the script here. I'll put a new script. We'll clear this. We'll open our second script. And of course, instead of pulling them in from a text file, I could enter or type these in directly here. I'm going to check. That script is OK. And as I run this, it's completed. We'll close that and look at the whole data. And you'll see numbers are now added here. And we can continue with an analysis. Scripting can extend to reports and graphs as well. This set of instructions here describes a typical example of how you might want to compare an analysis against a model test. We're going to open a file. We're going to call it, open our file calc.hcnc, hcnc being the extension for the HydroComp NavCAD software. We're going to calculate the resistance as part of the analysis group and file save as. We'll save that file again. So we're going to calculate, we're going to open the file, calculate the resistance, and save it again to the same file just to be sure that our resistance is up to date. Now, we have a graph object that allows us to import files for comparison. So we're going to compare our calculated file against our multitest file. This enable file zero means we're going to turn off the active project as a file to compare. Typically, the active project that you're working on would show up in the graph as well. We're going to set line one, our test, as markers. You can see, you can see the triangle markers. Line style two, for line two, the calc.hcnc file will be a spline, a smooth spline. We're going to set our axes options to the CT coefficient versus fruit number. And then we're going to save the graph as a JPEG file with the name ctfn.jpg. Now, I won't demonstrate that in NavCAD, but just by copying this and running it, it if we had those files in our directory, we'd be able to um, very easily and very quickly prepare without clicking through the interface this kind of a file. Now, where this particular example is quite useful is that the scripting can also be run in a quiet mode. We have added a capability in NavCAD 2015 Premium to be run as a calculation engine from third-party software, such as Excel, or the, a good example is the Casis software from Friendship Systems. We're working very closely with them to provide NavCAD as an option, as a calculation engine. One way of doing that is to use what we call management scripts that in turn will call data and calculation scripts. So the third-party software, Excel, or CASIS or some other tool can make calls to set an active directory. So all of your files in this case will be displayed on the desktop and we can run common scripts. So you can very easily create a systematic series of calculations and run many, many hundreds, if not thousands, if you wanted calculations automatically. I mentioned earlier this series 64 reanalysis that we're 
working on using this kind of quiet redirect very frequently because we're running lots of different calculations and variants with small changes in some of our code to see what the results might be. Now let me switch over to an operating modes analysis. This is a mission analysis where instead of sizing a, a uh, propeller, for example, for a single design point, you may want to look at what the implication of hull characteristics, engine options, propeller options are across an entire mission or duty profile. We provide the metrics to understand what's going on, what's termed key performance indicators, and we'll see those in just a minute. Now, multiple modes, operating modes, make up a mission. Modes can be of a transit type, meaning you're traveling at a particular speed between two different points over a distance or a time, or a towing application where you want to, to generate a particular tow pull or you want to maximize the towing capability. A harbor tug is a good example of a multi-mode benefit from this where you can look at how much time is spent under towing operations and how much time is spent under transit operations. We can also utilize the new compound gear options in NAVCAD if you're having a two engine into one compound gear into a single shaft output. The operating modes analysis allows you to turn both engines on, one engine off, or to explicitly idle one engine. So let's look at that in NAVCAD. I'm going to open a, an operating modes file in particular that we have saved. And under tools, propulsion analysis, oops, I'm sorry, utilities, operating mode analysis, you'll see that we have set up six different modes. There's a towing mode, a standby mode, and four different transit speed modes. Now let's look at one of the transit modes as an example. I'm calling this task 10 knots and its service type is a transit. Now I can have idle and I can have a variety of different towing. I can have a maximum tow pull, 80%, 20%, or I can specifically define a tow pull. This is used you're pairing different propulsion systems, an open versus a ducted propeller, where you really want to compare side by side, a ducted propeller will inherently have the ability to generate more tow pull. So if you want to look at real comparative side by side numbers, you can actually establish a defined tow for that. In a transit mode, you can solve for either distance, speed, or time and entering in the other two. Here, we're solving for distance by putting in a time in hours and this is our 10 knot case and we know that we're gonna be running out of our thousand hour year, 250 at 10 knots. Now, of course, just as a sidebar, in order to get a meaningful answer out of this analysis, you have to have a representative duty profile for the characteristics and performance of your ship. Now we'll see here the description that you've entered in the duty. And then there's a variety of fuel consumption and propulsion performance and other key performance indicators. We'll see this in just a moment here. The calculation. Now NAVCAD just recalculated the resistance and propulsion, including any propeller selection that may be necessary um, for the given design point uh, for a uh, the six task mode conditions that we have here. It can be metric fuel rate, mass fuel rate, total fuel for each mode over the operating hours, and total fuel mass for each mode. Propulsion performance gives us RPM, engine power, engine load, controllable pitch setting if this was a CPP application, and tow pull for our towing analyses. And then we have three different kinds of consumption indices. We have a ship consumption index, 
You have a dead weight consumption index. This is something that will be added into the future where a, a real critical metric might be not the movement of the ship itself, but the movement of deadweight cargo. So you'll be able to enter in a deadweight figure and look at the consumption in indices there. And we also have a topol consumption index. But for most people, the really interesting things are the fuel rates and the fuel volumes. Now we can save reports and look at this in a tabular form, or we can also show it a graph and we can show it by duration. Now, these are the individual points. Here's our standby point, RPM and power, our 10 knots, our 14, our 17, and our 20. And here's our topol. Now, we can show the size and the amount of time spent by duration by the size of the circles that, for our markers. But, but we can also do it by fuel volume. So this graphic gives a very, very good representation of the modes that are requiring the most fuel. Our towing operation requires the bulk of the fuel. Then our 17 knots, then our 14, then our 10. We spend so little time at 20 that that really uses very little fuel, and our standby uses almost none at all. To reiterate, the fuel consumption and energy KPIs are calculated in the operating modes analysis, and a graph of this engine operating points and fuel can be displayed and saved as a, as a graph that you can bring into your own ports. The graphs will be incorporated into the um, reports as, as well. Now, the the next item is our wave theory analysis. Now, wave theory analysis is not a parametric method. Many people are familiar with the Holtrop method, for example, or the Series 60, or the Savitsky method, or, or any of the, the 40 or so different prediction methods that are traditionally used in NAVCAD. It's called a parametric method because you use length, beam, draft, displacement to establish non-dimensional parameters, typically length over beam ratio, prismatic coefficient, and those are regressed into equations. The wave theory resistance is much closer to a first principles resistance, where we use the distributed, the longitudinal distribution of the immersed volume that you will enter into tables a longitudinal position, and correspondingly, a beam, a sectional area, and the immersion or vertical center below the waterline of the sectional area. So the term that we use for our resistance prediction is the prismatic wave drag. Because it's based so significantly on the sectional area, which is the basis for the prismatic quotient, so we use the term prismatic wave drag. Now, one of the benefits of this is that as well as taking the and creating a more refined definition of what the hull form looks like for the prismatic wave drag calculation, you can also allow this to assist in the development of information such as half angle of entrance and the stern shape factor that's in keeping with the objectives of the parameters. So if you have this data, it's very easy to copy and paste these columns right from an Excel spreadsheet, for example, or a table in Word, and you can uh, quickly bring this into, into NAVCAD. I'm going to sh show an example of the simulation using the same correlation that we've been using all along. But if I go into um, special predictions, in addition to the submarine box barge and barge train, you'll find the prismatic wave drag. And here's where you set the calculation parameters. We have a standard 
setting, which I would encourage everybody to use until they have a little more understanding of the influences of the other two. There's a viscous in influence, which includes uh, an estimate of additional boundary layer thickness. And then there's a dynamic trim model that shifts the um, shifts the sectional area curve to more represent what it the should be in a trimmed condition. So we can accept that. And then once we accept that, our technique is changed to a defined and prismatic wave drag is displayed. Uh, let me once again show you the station distribution of our data here. And when we see a number that's a little different, like we had originally estimated our half angle of entrance to be 11.57, the station distribution data suggests it should be 11.4. That's of no consequence. But our stern shape factor here is significantly different. So we're going to use the 2.2 that the station distribution is recommending. And then when we run our analysis, this will take a, a little moment. It will run the prediction through a fairly iterative analysis and come up with a resistance curve. So from that standpoint, it functions exactly like every other resistance prediction method would. It just uses a different kind of slender ship theory, which is its basis, as the, the calculation methodology for the longitudinal emergency. Now, we have done a substantial amount of work trying to extend this uh, slender ship basis to fuller ships and ships with transom sterns, and we've had really good success with it. These are th just three examples right here of what would be considered non-traditional vessels that, that would be well behaved with typical or slender ship wave theory. The first one here on the left is the NPL. It's the 4C model. And uh, what we're seeing is resistance over speed. And all of these look good, but uh, I must say that, that this is about the, the uh, worst precision we would hope for. We always seek to get at least this good or better on everything. We're doing a lot of validation studies to try and, and establish what the scope of the method is, because frankly, you know, not all hulls will be suitable. Barges are a good example of that. But second method, or the second hull form, is the DTM-5415, which is a transom stern combatant model with a radar dome. And this last one is a UBC-6. And you can see how it picks up the humps and hollows of the resistance curve. Now, one of the characteristics of this kind of a method is that it will tend to over-predict the humps and hollows a little bit. So that kind of, of suppression is something that we are working on. Certainly barges would be unsuitable for this. Tankers, certain tankers are surprisingly good. Where we see the limitation on this are hulls with very, very low immersion. Hulls that are deep, even if they're full, uh, uh, run quite well. But hulls that are quite shallow, you know, a high beam overdraft ratio, for example, or more importantly, a high length overdraft ratio, is where we see the the greatest margin of difference between model tests and the the prismatic wave drag calculation. That's a summary of the uh, th three principal different um, uh, calculation modules in the NAVCAD Premium ed Edition. The prismatic wave drag that we just saw, the operating modes analysis, and the scripting capability. Uh, the, uh, the added feature of the uh, workgroup license allows you to include 
it allows you to set up the the licensing for the software not on your computer with a security key but you can put it on to computer in your work group it does not need to be a dedicated server but frequently it is and a little service runs and manages the distribution check in check out of licensing so what that means is that if you have multiple users of NavCAD in your work group, instead of manually sharing the license, you can set it up so it will electronically share the license across the network when NavCAD is run. And then when it closes again, it will check a license back in. And you can have a number of concurrent users that you want. This sets up an upgrade for one concurrent user. That means any number of you can use it, but only simultaneously one at a time. At this point, I'd like to thank you for your time, and we'll open the um, open to any questions that you have. We have one question that was submitted through the chat, so let me just briefly address that, that here. Um, the question is: Is is the prismatic wave drag like CFD? What I'd like to do is go back to this here in in some ways it is in that it's a more of a first principles approach where where it uses a shape and a volume of the hull as opposed to the parameters of the hull but it is substantially different in a couple different ways you know cfd is is a calculation that really evaluates um, fluid stress and viscous character the characteristics on a boundary, on a panel, if you will. And it's based on those finite differences of velocities and pressures between physical locations, you know, so between one panel and, and another, and it iterates until it resolves itself. Unlike CFD, which is based on the perimeter or the wetted surface of the volume, the prismatic wave drag is based on the characteristics of the volume itself, the sectional area, the beam, the intersection with the water plane, and the centroid of vision. So it, it is a simpler representation of the immersed volume. That simpler re representation, though, can be beneficial in a number of different ways. One, if you are working on a project where the design evolution is still early in the design spiral, you don't really have a final wetted surface shape yet. You may not have propeller pockets. You may not have all of the different characteristics designed yet. So dealing with a wetted surface and a beam distribution may in fact be a more, a more useful uh, way of, of looking at hull optimization and hull shapes early in the design spiral. Another characteristic that is different about our implementation of wave theory is that many of the other ones use water plane cuts, that they are based on an offset distance from the center line using, you know, shape changes of, of you know, first derivative shape changes are, are what wave theory resistance really is all about. And so if you're using a waterline cut instead of the entire volume, if you have a that goes through a significant um, change in slope, such as a cut through a, a propeller pocket is a very example, that if, if you draw a waterline through that a propeller pocket, it's not smooth. It, it has large transitions and shapes. And uh, this kind of linear wave making theory does not handle those shapes well. By fairing it out through the use of the entire uh, sectional area in the volume and not something that represents the surface, the analysis becomes much more well be consistent and far easy easy to use there's there's no mystery in using the prismatic wave drag you set up the data and you let the prediction method handle everything else are there any other questions
If there are, uh, we encourage you to use the chat feature in the side of the any meeting webinar interface. We'll wait just a moment to see if anybody has any. It does not appear that there, there are any additional questions. So certainly if you do have questions that pop up after we close, please feel free to email me and uh, we'll be happy to discuss any of the, the features or characteristics of the new NAVCAD Premium Edition with you. So on that, I'll thank you very much for the time that you today during this webinar, and we look forward to having you join us at another webinar in the future. This is Don McPherson. I'm the Technical Director here at HydroComp, and on behalf of at, at HydroComp, thank you very much. Have a good day.